The topic of my message today is why are you crying? Today we're celebrating, uh, we are celebrating resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. And for us, Easter, it's a, not just a, a day off. It's not just a, a fancy holiday. For us, it's more than information. For us believers, resurrection of Jesus Christ is transformation. You know, did you know that followers of Jesus Christ, his disciples, for this truth, they were willing to die. Pay attention to this fact. Because of this truth, because Jesus, he rose from the dead, for that truth, they were persecuted and they were willing to die. So for us, it's not just information. For us, it's transformation. Many lives around the world, around the globe, they were transformed because of this event. Because Jesus, he rose from the dead. And we as believers who are celebrating this, and we believe that he rose from the dead, and we confess, and we proclaim glory to God. In the, in the scripture, we read that if Christ has not been raised, then all my preaching is in vain it's useless and your faith is useless can you guys can you guys imagine you go, going to church you making some sort of efforts you are sitting here my preaching the whole faith has make no sense it's useless if christ was never risen this fact it's more than just historical fact like i said because of that fact we believe that there is life after death we believe that there is future in the resurrection of Jesus Christ, I see a big, deep process of restoration. Restoration from nothing. When people think there is, it's impossible to, to, to restore. When, some, when, when, when a person is dead, it's impossible, humanly speaking, to restore and to bring it back to life. But Jesus Christ, through his resurrection, he is testifying to all of us today that he can restore what was dead. There is no hope. Humanly speaking, impossible to bring it back to life. Glory to God. Thank, praise God and glory to God for his resurrection. Today, I would like to bring us back and read together from John chapter 20, verse 11. Before we're going to read, I would like to remind you that, Jesus, that our Christian faith is based on faith. When Jesus, when Jesus rose from the dead, the first thing he said when he appeared to his disciples, he rebuked them because they did not have enough faith. He rebuked them, they did not believe what was predicted through the prophet and the scripture. That's what Jesus told them. And today I would like to ask all of us, do we believe in the scripture? Do we believe in what is predicted about the future? Because he rebuked his disciples that they didn't believe, even though he told them that it's going to happen. He told, through many prophets, they knew about the Messiah, but somehow they missed it and they did not believe. Do we believe that one day Jesus Christ will come back and take his church? Do we believe, because it's predicted in the scripture, that Jesus will come back again and he will judge the whole earth? Do we believe that one day the Bible says that the whole earth will be consumed by fire and we as his church we will be saved we will be taken to him and we will spend eternity with our Lord and God do we believe in this let's go back to John chapter 20 verse 11 through 15 we read that Mary was standing outside the tomb crying and as she wept, she stood, she stood, um, she stopped and looked inside. She saw two angels at the place where the body of Jesus had been lying. Dear woman, why are you crying? They asked. Because they have taken away my Lord. Then she turned to leave and saw someone standing right there. It was Jesus, but she didn't recognize him. Dear woman, why are you crying? Jesus asked. Who are you looking for? Today, we will discuss what were the very first words of resurrected Jesus. The first, the very first words of resurrected Jesus 
he asked two questions simple just two questions first question was why are you crying second question was who are you looking for let's start with the first question guys can you imagine can you just think if you claim that you are spiritual why are you crying that's the best question that Jesus found we would think that no 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 we should start with the theological question do you know what it means to be born again Mary Mary do you know what it means to live righteously do you know what is holiness he did not start with theology can you imagine what would you guess what would be the what would be the most important words that Jesus should have said right after the resurrection this is the first encounter of resurrected Jesus with human with people and he appeared to Mary Magdalene and the first question that he's asking her is why are you crying he didn't rebuke her sorry Mary for interrupting your prayer he didn't start like that he just asked simply you know why are you crying he didn't say come on stop whining Mary come on three years with me like what is this like come on relax stop stop this complaining stop crying no he asked Mary why are you crying she could have answered like Lord if you're Lord you're God you know why I'm crying yeah he knew and that's exactly why he's asking because he wants you to tell him why you are crying instead of going around and crying to other people instead of whining and complaining to other people instead of expressing your emotions with uh, to other people pouring out your anger your emotions your sadness to other people because if you do so I don't think it's going to benefit you or them instead please come to me and tell me why are you crying I can I am blown away Lord God Jesus resurrected the very first question he has why are you crying he cares about your emotions he cares about your tears and he's willing to listen yes to your stories go and share it with him instead of maybe it's okay yes sometimes to share it with our close friends people but you know when you when you share your emotions and tears with other people often you know they are hurt you are hurt you lost peace yes you did express your emotions everybody got that part yes we know that you are sad you are hurt we know that but David in the Bible he complained a lot to God not to people and he often said Lord God this is so unfair this is unjust I'm doing good and they pay back with evil Lord God why yes he did express his emotions and his tears but he brought it to Jesus and that's why Jesus is confirming to us again if you are going through some harsh time trouble if you don't know how to explain it if you are hurt please it's better to bring your emotions and tears to him he cares this was the very first question he asked when he was resurrected praise God that he is willing to listen and you know when Mary was standing there crying Jesus was next to her right at that moment even though she didn't see it she didn't feel it she didn't believe in it she didn't recognize him the Bible says she thought it was a gardener and often when we are going through hard times Jesus is also standing next to us close to us in our life but we don't see them with our physical eyes we don't feel or don't believe in him we sometimes might be um, angry with God Lord why am I praying and you're not saying anything you're not answering my prayers even though Jesus himself was talking to Mary right at that moment and sometimes Jesus is talking God is talking to us through other people that he sends in our life Jesus he sends people sometimes in your life and he is speaking to you through them through these people you don't see Jesus in them you don't realize maybe you expected another person another answer something else but God sometimes he uses people and he's talking to us through them and and also one more thing be careful not to give glory to people give glory to God because these people that you think they're good they're holy they're cool they're the one who were there for you but it was because God used them at the right moment 
Because remember, that same people can hurt you. That same people can be, they can disappoint you big time. They can crush you. You will be so, you will be so depressed because of people, how they can behave. So remember, even though God sometimes sends you right messages through right people, right place, right timing, it's because He is still at work. He is the counselor. He is the one who is talking. He is the one who is asking, why? My son, my daughter, why are you crying? When she was crying, at one moment the Bible says that she turned away and she looked into the tomb and she changed her process her her thoughts were it suddenly turned into the direction where Jesus was laying and after at that moment something shifted in her mind and then circumstances were changed because of that moment because of that shift because she changed her focus from her own problems her own deep personal problem she changed her focus onto Jesus and often when we are crying today for whatever reason we are grieving today often is because we need to change the focus and we need to focus on Jesus Christ I know it sounds very plain I know it sounds like we already knew we know that but I know when people are focusing too much on their problems on earthly things material things we begin we begin to drown you know Peter, you remember Peter, apostle who was walking on water? We think it was cool, but I think he was really scared at that moment to walk on water. Because the wind was strong, the waves were probably huge, and, he, and it was pretty scary dark. He was going through the storm. Why was he moving forward? First of all, because he believed and he did what Jesus told him to do. Second thing, why he was moving through the storm? because he was focused on Jesus next question is why why he went underwater why he started drowning why because at one point he changed his focus from Jesus and he started to look at the waves at the wind at the storm and he and he started going under the water and today when we're too focused on our earthly problems on our circumstances Sometimes we're also collapsing emotionally or physically or spiritually. We're going down, going down under the water. But we know that as believers, we know that there is life after death. We're celebrating the resurrection of Jesus Christ because we know that our hope and our future starts after we die physically. And eternity is still ahead of us. And often if we accept deeply understand the revelation that everything we're going through here on earth is temporary it's going to pass away much faster than we think then we have then we get a different mindset we have a different view on earth on all our circumstances that we're going through here on earth so Jesus he was asking why are you crying for her when she lost Jesus, that's what she said. Mary was explaining that I lost Jesus and I'm looking for him. At that moment, for her, he was everything. For us as believers, Jesus is everything. John chapter 14, verse 6, it says, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. Sometimes we're looking for something that is alive. Sometimes we're looking for life. We're looking for happiness, but we don't find it because we are missing the point people can make mistakes but I believe in the authority of the scripture it's his word God he said that Jesus is the true life and if we lost that life we need to quickly go back and look for that life she lost Jesus and she was crying because of that you know it's very rare that people cry because of their spiritual condition have you how often in your life have you met people they were crying and weeping because they have realized simply how poor I am spiritually. I am so far from Jesus. I probably lost him or about to lose him. And I am so depressed because of that. I need to get him back as soon as possible in my life. Because he is life. You remember at the time of resurrection they heard this word you are looking for someone who is alive you're looking for some among those who are dead 
And often we're looking for life, true life or happiness in this life, earthly. But we will never find it because Jesus is the true and only life. And for all, for, for many of us as believers, we already heard this truth many times. It didn't click. It didn't do anything. Even right now, some people are probably listening and it doesn't change anything. Well, Jesus is life. Okay, good, God, good, good, good job. Good for him. Good for me. But it doesn't change anything inside. But once we truly, with everything, honestly, personally, we realize, we accept this truth that there is no life, no happiness without Jesus in my life, then we will look at it from different perspective. What does it mean to practically lose Jesus? If you don't have time to go to church, it's very simple. You're losing Jesus or about to lose or maybe you lost him. It's very plain, very practical for every believer. If you don't have time in, if you don't have time in your schedule to have devotions every day, it doesn't matter how old you are. It doesn't matter if you're male or female, businessman or just someone. It doesn't matter if you are a follower of Jesus Christ. If you are a follower of Jesus Christ, if you are a believer, daily devotions, time that you spend with your Lord and the scripture that you're reading with him, you and God alone, close somewhere behind the door. If you don't have that time, that's a symptom that you're losing him, losing the relationship, not the knowledge. Not the knowledge, you still got the knowledge. I know you have plenty of knowledge. You know a lot about Jesus, but you don't have him, Jesus. You don't have the relationship with him. You don't miss it. You're not looking forward. You are not grieving because you don't have it. If you don't teach your kids, the, the bi biblical principles, if you don't spend time with him praying, especially if you're a father, it's a little sign that you're losing Jesus. Or maybe you, are, maybe you already lost him for a while and now you see the consequences in your life. If you're a father, you are better call everybody, not your wife. You must call as a husband. God gave you a one together and maybe apologize to God, to each other and say, let's pray, let's do this. Kids, we believe in our living God. If you don't have time or let me ask you this, when was the last time that you apologized to someone? I know it's very uninspected question. If you don't remember, when was the last time you said sorry? It's not because me or you are so great and so awesome and so holy and so like perfect. It's because at one point we are we are we lost or we are losing Jesus because when Jesus comes in your heart when Jesus is close when Holy Spirit is at work in your heart the Bible says that Jesus Matthew chapter 11 the Bible says I am humbled and gentle at heart I am humble so when you don't remember when was the first the last time you said sorry to someone it's because Jesus is probably far somewhere and the knowledge is still here but there is no relationship. Spiritually, you are about to die or almost dead. You are losing Jesus. And it's so important for us not to lose Jesus. You know, when you don't, when you are not encouraged, inspired by your prayer closet, if you're not looking forward to spend time with your God on your, in your daily devotions, but you know that Instagram inspires you every morning. You are inspired. You just woke up and you will look at it every night. Doesn't matter how tired you are, you will be inspired by social media. Daytime, when you have a break, even if it's a little break, even if it's a three minute break, one minute break, you will still be inspired by this. But not by the Word of God, not by Jesus. All you got, knowledge, zero relationship. Knowledge, that means you're losing, 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 losing. And you know what it, what it, what we, we can call this movie? I lost. Jesus or I lost myself or I lost the place where I was lost. Mary, good for her, she knew where she lost Jesus and she went exactly to that place and she was looking for Jesus. I am sure that many of us we know when that moment happened in our life when we lost him. Connection, not the knowledge connection, interest, you know, this desire, this, this um, zeal for Jesus. It doesn't drive us. 
even though him or her drives me to church, but inside I'm not driven by him. And maybe it's a good question to ask today, what replaced Jesus in my life? When did it happen that I lost him? What took over? What, what pushed him away out of my life, out of my heart? Why he's no longer a priority in my life? It is so important not to lose Jesus. Especially I would like to talk to families, many families. I don't think that I am a professional counseling person. I don't have degrees, but I know one thing and I can confirm you for sure. When families are broken, broken you cannot replace it with anything you cannot it's so hard to fix it and i know one thing for the fact and i'm telling you this with boldness usually it's because at one point one of the spouses they lost jesus not because of their characters not because of their mother-in-law or father-in-law not because they have different tastes all of these are secondary reasons, but the main reason is because at one point, listen to me, at least one, at least one of the spouses, they lost Jesus. Why one? Because even if the other guy or the other woman is very spiritual, it takes two to make marriage work. It takes two people to fight for marriage, fight for love, fight for spiritual life. And if one is losing it or lost it, then it's a disaster. And then you look at your kids, halfway orphans, and you're crying inside. And you know that there is nothing that can replace to them mom or dad. And the reason behind the deep reason, because at one point, they lost Jesus. Lost relationship. Lost it. It sounds very basic, very something we all know. But we lose him more often than we think. We lose him. And then we see tears in our kids eyes that's why my call today because jesus he's resurrected go and follow mary's steps find him look for him and if today you didn't plan to cry because you lost jesus maybe it's a, the perfect time today when we will pray say lord god that's me it's all about me i either lost him or about to lose him and I already see the consequences. Spiritually, I'm either dead or halfway dead. And I'm, and, and I'm celebrating this Easter. Who, who, who am I fooling? Why am I fooling around? Who am I tricking? Why am I faking? Jesus, yeah, you're resurrected. Jesus, like, Jesus? Really, Jesus? Instagram or Jesus? Devotions or Jesus? Excuses or Jesus? Do I miss him? Do I love him? Do I see that... That's what I want in my life? Second question that Jesus asked was, who are you looking for? So once again, I am amazed by why these two questions. First question, why are you crying? Second question is, who are you looking for? Second question is much deeper. Jesus is trying to go much, much deeper. Who are you looking for? All people, they are looking for happiness. Don't you agree? happiness if you try to search on youtube a video about how to be happy seven steps to success or happiness millions of views seems like <laughs> that's great easy fix you know five minutes you just watch a video clip and you become the most successful guy in the world happiness people they want to be happy the problem is this they're looking seeking happiness in something not in someone in something or they look for happiness in someone who is earthly human being both options are wrong people waste time waste a lot of emotions a lot of commotions still looking for happiness who are you looking for basically what Jesus was trying to say is this you know, a lot of people are looking for happiness in something which is usually money, comfort, or health. Let me ask you this. If this is true, why millionaires, billionaires, they commit suicide? They have health and lots of money. What's the problem? They're missing one thing. Jesus said, I am life. 
you can work. Seems like you are trying to pay for your life. Seems like you're busy, you know, to make everything good in your life. Your kids, your family, you're like after life. Looking back, there is no life. Bills and I exist. I exist and there is bills. Right? Don't you want to live? The Bible says, Psalm 62, truly my soul finds rest in God. Only, truly, the only true method, the only way how I can find comfort and rest for my soul is in God. I remember one day when I was very sad, I wanted to cry, I wanted to, I was mad at people that they don't understand me, they don't give me what I expected from them. It's like so basic. Why, how come people can be so evil and mean to me? And then one day this Bible verse comforted me so much that I realized that even though other people, your husband, your wife, they cannot satisfy all your desires. They cannot give you all you were dreaming about. It's very simple. The reason is this, because some substances we have inside some areas in our lives they cannot be replaced or fixed or be completed by humans only by God only by God this is a good tip for married people sometimes there is not there is no one who can complete you in that in some areas your deepest area your soul your heart your spirit only God only God you cannot buy it on Amazon you cannot order it. Only God can truly give you peace and comfort. That's why it's so important to know the answer to these questions. Jesus was asking, who are you looking for? He was looking for a deeper answer. He was looking for a true reason, a root of your disaster. Why are you crying? Why are you sad in your life? Often the reason why we're crying it's not because of what happened. It's because of who happened. It's not about what. It's about who. It's much, much, much deeper reason. Why do we feel like we feel? Who are you looking for? And often we're looking for justice. We're looking for love. We're looking for care. We are looking to be appreciated. We're looking for ourselves. Stop right there. What do you mean? Yeah, that's exactly what I mean. We're looking for ourselves. It's all about me, myself, and I. And the reason why I'm crying is because I am not happy. Someone hurt me. And I don't like this. But I love... Why do I love my wife? My wife? Because I love what she can give me to make me happy. That's what I love. Why do I love fish? Because I love to eat fish. And often that's how we put God in our perspective and we seem it seems like we're all for God we're all in church today we're all for Jesus we're not against the Bible we're all for we're looking for who we're looking for ourselves you're looking for respect for who for yourself you're looking for love for who for yourself right you want to be appreciated by by who by, by them you are looking for recognition, love, respect, care, and happiness. So basically the bottom line, it's all about us, about myself, my selfishness. Sometimes it's my ego. And sometimes when other people, they don't make us happy, we cry. And we cry because they didn't make us happy. Or we cry because we need other people to make us happy. So basically the bottom line, often we cry because it's our, because of ourselves. That's the true deep question, who are you looking for? Often it's, I'm looking for myself. Looking for my happiness, myself. What did Mary say? What did she say? What was her answer? She said, I'm looking for my Lord. John 20 verse 13. I'm looking for my Lord. A very deep and bold statement. She didn't just call him a prophet. He didn't, she, she, didn't, she didn't just call him a good guy. Many people, they respect Jesus 
as a rabbi, as a good teacher, as a prophet, but not as a, not as a Messiah, not as a son of God, not as my Lord. My Lord means my boss. Yes, my boss. He, I am under his authority and I'm all about his will, not my will, his will. Sounds very spiritual, but practically very difficult to do. My will, highway or my way. And she was calling him my Lord. Often we cry. Why are you crying? Because I'm looking for my will. I'm looking for my dreams. I'm looking for my plans. I'm looking for my expectations. It didn't go according to the plan. That's why I'm crying. That's why Jesus is asking, who are you looking for? You're not crying because of Jesus. You're not crying because of may Jesus, may your will be done. You're crying because your will was not done. Very deep questions, very simple, only two. And then if you believe that Jesus is your Lord, if you claim that he is your Lord, he is your boss, this is how it works practically. If, why, if, if any wife respects her husband, the Bible says that husband is, was put by God to be the head of the family. If wife respects her husband, she will never make a big purchase without consulting or asking her husband because she respects him because he is her head lord if a guy the bible says that for every man jesus is lord he is his head how many times men we buy jet ski boats cars houses we make deals after deals. We buy everything. Do we consult with anyone? No. Why not? Because I am my Lord. I am my God. I am my own boss. I don't need to. Lord, yeah, Lord. Yeah, I will be there on Sunday, Lord. I will show up. Lord, yeah, respect to you, Lord. But I am my own Lord. I am my own boss. I will decide. If you respect, you will never make plans without consulting with him at least ask i'm not even going deep to say like did you hear from the lord all i'm saying do you even have the reflex to ask lord god this is the this is the proposition this is the deal it's not only when you're getting married it's your daily life decisions lord is this your will one lesson i learned at least ask practice practice this this is my lord this is my god and i want to do his will if he's truly my lord often the conflict why we're crying is because your will and his will are overlapping that's why jesus was asking who are you truly looking for guys have you ever thought why jesus asked only these two questions for many people these two questions if you give them honest answers you can go home and you can Reflect and meditate on that for a very long time. Every time you feel sad, you ask yourself, why are you crying? Jesus is okay to listen. And then who are you looking for? Looking for yourself or looking for Jesus? Jesus, is he your prophet, your good guy or your Lord? Is it my will or his will? Are you crying because it's not your will? The end of the story, Jesus is resurrected and you know what I would do if I were Jesus I would go back to the Pharisees and said hello I am resurrected <laughs> you remember you told me if you're a son of God come come down and we'll believe in you here we go get out your phones we will do a little selfie here I am touch me very interesting why did why did Jesus did not go back to these folks have you ever thought about I think it would be such a cool testimony guys how are you feeling why didn't he do that you know why for the follower of Jesus Christ the faith faith true faith is so important I'm not talking about religion I'm not talking just coming to church on Sundays I'm talking about the relationship with the Lord through relationship when you do something for him because you want to because you love it not because you have to and uh, they had enough 
evidence in the in the life of Jesus many witnesses they saw that this is not this is something supernatural when Nicodemus came to Jesus he was he was one of the Pharisees even he admitted and he said to Jesus Lord you know your actions your deeds your miracles it is impossible for a people to do and they knew they heard about the miracles what did they say this is a supernatural power from devil what yeah from devil come on guys don't you see this is God this is supernatural no 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 free will I can resist I don't believe I don't accept yeah this is supernatural devil whoa 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 faith Jesus that's why you didn't go to talk to them one more fact how did these guys those who were behind this mission to crucify Jesus how did they find out about crucifix crucif uh, resurrection facts you know what happened who told them soldiers think about it soldiers who are these guys you know what these boys they know how to do these boys they know how to kill and they don't care who to kill soldiers they know how to kill and they don't know and they don't care who they have to guard they are soldiers not religious people they don't care about your tricks about your like should we hide it or not is this the Messiah they don't care they came and they just said straight facts yes we experienced earthquake yes we got sorry yeah we got scared yeah yeah we were there it was supernatural yeah the guy we have never seen this in our life he's risen he's alive they were probably shaking telling the truth plain facts that's all soldiers all we know is how to kill so these guys Pharisees they knew about resurrection from not through Twitter not through third party they got all the facts from those who were right there at the scene seen everything with their own eyes what happened to those boys no no we will pay you we will bribe you we will not believe we will not accept faith in our Lord God it's a free will it's a choice today for many people you today you heard a lot of useful or already known information but your transformation your decision is still up to you but what I'm preaching today I believe with all of my heart that it's more than information it can be a transformation for many lives and the last fact do you know who is all our problems are behind why are we dealing with all these problems today on earth the fall came through who who is in fault yes the woman it's her fault I'm sorry that we have to talk about her yes devil he did tempted the Eve in the garden but it was still free will it was her choice and what did she do she didn't obey God it was the biggest criminal record globally there is no another there is no 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 other criminal acts that stand even near even close to this one can you imagine how much evil here on earth how much pain here on earth how much sin have destroyed here on earth why because of the mistake of one woman we would never forgive her I think we would never give her a second chance the mistake is too big to bear and you know what happened resurrected Jesus he appeared first to who yeah to that woman that should never be for, for, for forgiven we would never give her a second chance and how did our Lord Savior came into this world through who 
through the woman. And one, one small remark. Man had nothing to do with that. Do you see? Huge deep restoration in the story of resurrection. Through woman, sin came into this world. And God is choosing woman coming to this earth through her and he's appearing first to the woman again to show everybody today that I am God who believes in second chance I am Jesus who is giving you hope when people will never forget or will not will not will not forgive you I am the one who can give you a second chance that's who I am. I am Lord. I am God. I am Jesus. I am the life. I am the truth. I am resurrected. And today you can have this hope and life and He will give you another chance today. Let's all stand. Hallelujah Jesus. Hallelujah Jesus. As we pray right now I would like to give this opportunity to everyone who is present here if you're watching online or if you are standing here and you feel like you need to repent you want to go back to Jesus if you feel like you lost him you can be forgiven today and you can have eternal life you can have you can be saved because of Jesus our ministers will be standing forward you can come to them and tell them your need and they will pray for you if you have any other need if it's physical pain if it's your kids your family your finances maybe it's your emotions maybe it's just too hard to carry you are so beaten up you just need encouragement you need support you need renewal that comes from above renewal that is that changes you from inside out you can come forward as well we'll be happy to pray for you this will be the best celebration and the best Easter in your life if Jesus brings something into your heart in Jesus name we will sing and as we worship we will continue praying and I encourage you and I bless you brothers and sisters if this is your first time in church this is the perfect opportunity to receive prayer and encouragement for you your soul your heart your life your family in Jesus name hallelujah Lord God hallelujah Lord God hallelujah Lord God Jesus hallelujah Lord God Jesus we thank you Lord God we bless you Lord God we worship you Jesus we thank you for your patience with us thank you Lord God for your mercy thank you Jesus for giving us this chance thank you Lord God for forgiving us and believing in us and showing us your beautiful way of restoration you are the one who restores hearts lives Lord God that's what that's what I love about you Lord God that in you at least I have a chance in you at least I have hope Lord God I'm asking you praise Jesus please forgive us if we're often crying because our selfishness because of our Lord God will because we put our my will before your will Lord God today please help us Lord God to understand and realize why are we crying who are we looking for whose will is priority in my life Lord Jesus please comfort many lives many hearts right now in Jesus name Lord God we bless you Lord we bless you Lord we love you Lord we worship you Lord God we thank you for your resurrection we thank you Lord God for everything that you have done we thank you Lord God for your victory 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 on the cross hallelujah Jesus hallelujah Jesus hallelujah my Lord hallelujah my Lord my God hallelujah Jesus Hallelujah Jesus. Hallelujah Jesus. Hallelujah Jesus. Hallelujah Jesus. Holy and anointed one. Hallelujah.
my God I confess that you are the living God I confess that you died for my sins you paid the price but you rose again I believe that I believe in your resurrection I believe in the everlasting life Lord I pray for those who have been asking for forgiveness today Lord God if they if someone have fallen away if they slip Lord God if they see and admit that they're losing Jesus or maybe they lost him Jesus please tell them personally in their life into their heart directly that you see them care willing to hear why are you crying and you believe and you bring restoration restoration in Jesus name Lord God please help us to accept this truth help us not to go just after information we know so much information Lord God today we need transformation if you're that person pray that prayer right now make it very personal and say Lord God I know enough information my Lord my God I need transformation in my life I need transformation in my character, transformation in my will, transformation in my plans, my desires, transformation how I look at life, transformation in my emotions. Lord God, I just need peace. Lord, it's impossible about without your transformation. Lord God, I bless everyone who have prayed that prayer. Lord Jesus, we thank you. We give you all the glory and honor. Lord God, we worship the resurrected King you are still the King you are still on the throne you are still under control yes Lord forgive us yeah we made mistakes yes Lord God sometimes yes we have the scarves because of our mistakes Lord God but we have nobody to go to we still come to you Jesus we looked for life outside of true life we were going around Lord God even though we're still young but we already Lord lost time and we see the price that we have to pay when we lose you Lord help I bless every single person in the sanctuary I bless everyone who's watching online help us Lord to never lose you never lose you and to some time cry peacefully silently privately cry about the fact that we are losing you Jesus and you are the only true life you are the only life that can bring happiness 
and fullness. Jesus, we thank you and we give you all the glory in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen.